Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're talking senses. This new chapter that we're on is dealing with both the somatic and special senses. All that means is we're taking a look at the senses in our skin, like the sense of touch, for instance, and pain, and the special senses. That would be seeing, hearing, smelling, and tasting. So let's take a look at the receptors involved in these sensations. There's different kinds. For instance, we have chemoreceptors. Now, chemoreceptors are detecting chemicals, hence the name. So this would be found in places like our taste buds or in our nasal cavity. We have pain receptors, and so these are detecting heavy pressure. There are thermoreceptors. Probably guess what this is detecting. That's right, temperature, hot and cold. There are mechanoreceptors, so these are going to be things like touch. And lastly, we have photoreceptors, and this is detecting light. So a couple definitions here. First of all, a sensation is a feeling that occurs when impulses are interpreted by the brain. So everything that we can feel, everything that we can smell and taste and hear and see, all that information is going to the brain where it's being processed by the brain. Now, in many cases, however, uh, once the brain interprets that information, it's going to send it back out right to where it came. And this is what's known as a projection. So the brain causes these feelings uh, to seem to come from the area being stimulated. In other words, if you were to put your fingertips on the tabletops, the mechanoreceptors in your fingertips are sending impulses to your brain. Your brain is interpreting that, and then it's sending it right back out to your fingertips. So you're really feeling it in the fingertips, but really you're interpreting it in your brain. That makes sense? Yeah, so that way, you know, if you're feeling pain, for example, you know exactly where that pain is originating from. Over time, however, you can become adapted to those senses. So, for instance, maybe you've uh, gone into somebody else's house, and every house has its own unique smell. It's not bad, it's not good, it's just the way it is. But after being there for a while, pretty soon you don't smell that anymore. You're becoming adapted to that. Simply because of that constant stimulation, the impulses are no longer being interpreted and uh, sometimes they're no longer being sent. So for instance, uh, maybe you live close to a railroad. Well, there might be days that go by where you don't hear the train going by. You just, you're, you hear it so often that your brain just ignores that stimulus that's coming in. So let's start with the somatic senses. Now these are the senses that are associated with our skin, uh, usually, uh, but also in our muscles, joints, and in various organs. So we have some mechanoreceptors. These are, we're going to start with the touch and the pressure senses. So here we see a cross-section of the skin. This looks familiar to you, right? You see the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layer. In the top of the dermis and going into the epidermis are free nerve endings. And those are labeled A. So these structures right here, we can see the, the nerves are just going off into the bottom of the epidermis. And so we'll just label that as A. And these can be a variety of things, as we'll see. Uh, these could be for pressure, they could be for temperature. The second type are the Meisner corpuscles. Now those are labeled B, and you can see way up here at the top of the dermis are some Meisner corpuscles. These are sort of rounded in shape, and they can detect very light touch. So they're real close to the surface in order for that to happen. And then the third type, which is on the next slide, so let's label these. We can see these deeper in the dermis. They're sort of round as well. These are called the Pacinian corpuscles, and so these can detect heavy or deep pressure. Now, some of these free nerve endings are, are also measuring temperature, so we have some temperature senses. Now, there's two types of free nerve endings that make up our temperature senses. Can you guess what those two are? Yeah, that's right. There's hot and cold. Typically, the cold receptors measure temperatures between 50 and 68. And the heat temperatures are between 77 and 113. That's a three there. So notice, between 68 and 77, 
We don't have any specific temperature sensors. Now, that's right about room temperature. This is why everybody feels room temperature different. Right now, some of you are cold, some of you are hot. It just depends on how your brain is interpreting that. Because right now, the temperature in this room is somewhere in that 70 to 74 degree temperature range, and neither the hot nor the cold receptors are responding to that. Oftentimes, we touch something very hot. Whenever you touch something hot and it's above that 113 degrees, that's when the pain senses kick in. And the same thing is true if you touch something that's really cold. If it's below 50 degrees, the pain receptors are going to be involved in that. So maybe you've touched something that's really cold, but you don't know if it's cold or is it hot because it's the same receptors that are sending information to the brain. And so that's why the brain uses some of these visual cues as well to determine if it's hot or cold. So let's talk about the sense of pain. Again, these are free nerve endings that are found all throughout the skin, as well as our internal, or if you look in the gray box, it says that pain is measured in units of doles. The instrument used to measure pain is called a dolerimeter. And so that's kind of interesting. What does a dolerimeter look like? Well, here's a dolerimeter. Oh, no, wait, that's not it. That's the dolerimeter. So you can see you can put a certain amount of pressure onto skin and people can rate what that uh, pain is. Going back to our sense of pain, uh, there's two different types. There are visceral pain. So this is widespread pain that comes from internal organs. And if you've ever had any abdominal pain, you can see that can be very painful and it just seems to spread all throughout the abdomen. Uh, it can also cause something known as referred pain. It is pain that feels like it's coming from some other part of the body. So for example, uh, one of the uh, symptoms of a heart attack is pain going down the left arm. Now the left arm has nothing to do with the heart attack. It all has to deal with the heart, which is in the center of the chest, by the way. Uh, but because some of that information is carried to the brain that comes from the heart as well as the left arm, the brain is interpreting it as being in the left arm. And so that basically are your somatic senses. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the special senses then. And I can't wait to tell you all about it.